So we are going to discuss the CRM project, the planning part, and we are going to look into the solution I'm proposing. Here are the different points we are going to, to look at. So let's start with the planning. You can go back to the tutorial basics of MS Project to see how I do the different things. Here I will just present the solution. I have structured my project, the CRM project, with first an initiation, and then I have a phase of planning then execution realization when the biggest part of the work is going to be done and in the end the closing this as you can see is what we call the life cycle of a project so in my case now if i take initiation to look what i have inside initiation and first of all i want to say that there are no wrong solutions everyone is interpreting a project in its own way so your solution might look different but is a solution too so what i have done it's that i have here now the project proposal that we will prepare it's a small project so i thought one day is enough once we have the project proposition we need the project approval for this, usually it's a steering committee or it can be a department manager. Anyway, it's one of the stakeholders or some of the stakeholders together that will make a decision in which they approve the project. Approval of the project is generally done based on a macro planning plus a budget. After that, I have a phase which I call planning. So here again, I won't spend too much time on planning, although I know planning with MS Project can take quite long. Half a day, let's say, we spend for a global macro planning. After that, we enter in the big part of the work, which is the execution. For this, let me remove here the navigation pan for a while. And during execution, you will see that I also have summary tasks with sub-summary tasks. So I have a first step here that I can call conception. It's when we will here define the real requirements that we have about the solution we are looking at. It will be an online solution since we need to be fast in this project. So once we have the uh, requirements, we will go and do the solution evaluations. This for about two weeks. Once this is done, we will gather with the different people of the team, the stakeholders, the ones that are going to make that decision, and we choose the solution. After that, I've left one week to do the handling of contracts, agreements, and the system purchase. Once this is done, we can have now the IT teams start their work with the users. After that, there will be some installation on people's workplaces with maybe some data adaptations, integrations with the existing data systems. So this is all what I've set under application installation. Let's admit that it is installed, it starts to work, so we will need to do some tests. And first, I have here during four days, test of the interface, the user interface. Is it doing what we expect it to be doing? After that, we have functional tests. So we test the functions, the characteristics, what we are going to use from the CRM, and this is during six days. So all in all, the test will last 10 days. Now, what I have done, it's that we need also to train the users. So when we start the tests, it's good to also already have trained user or at least to train them during that time. The reason being that they can help in some of the tests who best than the user will be able to say if the system is really working as they expect it. 
So I propose four days of training, meaning that we do a session of two days where half of the people are trained and another session of two days where the other half of the people are trained like that. Still, some people can work while the others have training like that. You do not disturb too much the operation. Once this is done, so people are trained, the system is in place, so we are ready to go into production. So for this, I've set the in production is the date. You see, I've set zero days for this. So it is a milestone when we want to start the system and have to go to production. Once it is in production, I leave a period here of two weeks after during which we will survey what's going on. It means that users have been trained but are not experienced and the system might also not exactly work in real conditions as during the tests. So for that period of two weeks we'll maybe have some help from consultants or other people who are more knowledgeable, more experienced and that can intervene and help user to go around their issues. Once this is done, we can do what we call the project closing. At that moment, we gather the people that participated in the project, we gather with the management, the different stakeholders, and we'll summarize what went really well in the project, also the issues we found, what we could improve, and it's also a good time where management can really thank the people that participated in that project. With that, we have the closing of the project. So this is the planning how I have set it. You see the different days. So what I did, if I start again from the beginning, you see that there isn't uh, something really specific for initiation or for planning. For conception here, I took the, the different tasks here and I said they will happen one after the other. So it's really something sequential. To do that, to remember you how to do it, you go into tasks and you see I can here come and link the selected tasks. To remember, all those information can be found in the video about basics of MS Project. Another point that I want to mention, it's here, up, the project approval. You see that it is represented by a diamond. Diamond means it's a milestone. How do you get a milestone? You get a milestone by saying that the task duration is zero day. With this, we've done the planning part. So now we are left with the question, is the project doable? For this, I need to take the planning. So now I've taken the planning and I'm going down here, you see, to the production run. We've scheduled it to be on the 29th of April, which is the goal we, we had. When I look at the planning, you, you see that here there is that white space between the end of what we have to do in the project and the beginning of the production. So this means that we have some spare time in case that anything would go wrong in the project. That spare time is about one week. So I could say in the meeting that if we follow the path of this project, we still have one week of margin before to start the production. I think this is enough in that kind of project to make sure we can start it and that the project is doable. So at that point, I would say that yes, this project is doable let's take together the decision and the approval for the project. In such a project, I will need people from uh, different departments. 
And for that, I will go now again to MS Project to show you how I've done it. So now I'm into the, the planning and I will switch to the resource sheet. And here you discover the different uh, people I will need in this project. I will need some stakeholders. I've put two stakeholders. I put this under their general name. After that, I will need the project manager, which I mean, it will be you. Yeah, you are the project manager. And after that, in the project, we need integrators, people that will do the implementation of the solution on the desktops, on the servers. And after that, we said also that it's good to have some users to participate into the, the tests and we will need to train them. So depending on the departments, I, I took a few uh, of them, so six of them. And after that, we said that uh, at a certain moment there is an issue with the contract, payments and all that, so it will involve an accountant. So one or the other one, uh, at that point, I don't know. We might also need some help from external resources like a consultant. So I've put here one, two consultant, we'll see how it will go and what we really need. And after that, of course, that the people, the heads of the different departments, they might be involved in one way or the other one. So you might say, okay, they are within the stakeholders or they are within the, the users. I've just added here an example, the chief marketing officer, the CMO. The CMO could be involved because all this is under marketing, sales and support. So all is relation to the customer. And what is also good, no, do not forget to use assistant. Assistant are really powerful people because they transfer IDs, they can give you also uh, feedbacks on what's going on, what their people think of the solution. So all this is really useful to a project manager. So this is more or less the list I've established. It's not exhaustive, yours can be different. It doesn't mean that mine is right, yours is wrong. It's just context might be different and approaches might be different. So I think that now we, we have the list of the people we, we want. The project manager, I said it, but it's you, it's you. And now the question that is left is which department will have the lead on this? I'm asking this because I often see when IT is involved that IT should have the lead or it was historically in that way. I've seen now in the past years many changes in businesses where more and more it's from the user that the lead is coming. And in such a situation, I would propose that the marketing has the lead on the, the project. Sometimes I've seen at IT departments people that are hurt by such situations. I see also some companies where there are frictions due to that. So this is a question that can stay open, but why not to give the lead of the project on the user side? Well then, you've arrived to the end of exercise one about the CRM project. So the planning, the people are in place. You've approved the project. So we will now continue with other exercises. You liked it, you can sum up, you can comment. For me, this experience is new to have such interactions, so I'm really pleased to see and get some feedback. So hope to see you soon on the Vision 6D channel and do not forget to subscribe. Bye bye.